advocate. This is why I have a policy of I don't block people. I talk to people who disagree with me. Okay? That's what free speech is about. And as a journalist and radio talk show host, I believe in talking to people about the issues. So you may have seen my last Periscope where I invited Hillary advisor Adam Parkomenko to come on my show. He's claimed we're Russian propaganda. I've said we're not, and the proof of that is I'm inviting him on my show. So before I, I get down to this, let me say two things. I'm going to do something that I did not see Milo, Pam Geller, Mike Cernovich do on their press conference, which is take questions. And if any of them want to talk about the things I'm going to say here in a public forum or privately, they have my number. Milo certainly has my number. Cernovich certainly has my number. It's in my Twitter profile. If any of them want it, but they, they have it because I've talked to them both. Uh, they can do that. So let me talk about what's going on and my concerns about this event. So let me ask you a question. Let me start here. And I, by the way, feel free to retweet this puppy. Let me start here. If I told you, if I advertised, we're doing the Citizen Journalism and Activism Conference in D.C. coming up, right? If I advertised that Steve Bannon was going to be there, and I knew he wasn't. Is that ethical? I'm going to say that, I'm going to ask that again, because I put on events. If I advertised that Steve Bannon was going to be at that event, and I got all the resultant publicity, right? And I got people signed up based on that, would that be ethical? Okay? Everyone's saying unethical. Okay. So that's why I don't do that. By the way, Steve won't be there. I might invite... I, yeah, we, he's welcome to come. But he's not going to be there. And the reason I don't advertise that is it would be unethical. So what Milo needs to answer is the following question. Was he told that Steve Bannon would not be coming to this event? By Breitbart Editor-in-Chief Alex Marlow. And despite being told that, did he continue to advertise that Bannon would be there? Did he and Alex have a, an email exchange about that? It's a very specific question that I'm, that I'm asking. So that's one question you should be asking. Here's another question, because there's no conjecture on this next one. Milo, when you advertise that Charles Murray would be coming, can you prove that you spoke to him because he says you didn't? When you invited the guy from Google who says you never spoke to him. Has everyone seen that one? When you invited, when you, when you claimed that Heather McDonald would be there, and she says she hadn't heard from you, right? So leave the Bannon one aside for a second. Leave what we know. Charles Murray, and you can look this up, Charles Murray said he was not only not asked, but he would never appear at something with Milo. That's what Charles Murray is quoted as saying. Now, here's the next question. So we, we have people who were claimed that they would be there. Now, by the way, let me mention somebody else, David Horowitz. David Horowitz was on the schedule, and he said on my radio show he was planning to be the, at the event. So I'm not saying that everybody who was on there hadn't been talked to. I'm, I'm naming some very specific people. Do you understand? 
Clearly, Ann Coulter was scheduled to be there and canceled. Clearly, Lucian Wintrich was scheduled to be there and canceled. Why they canceled, we'll leave that aside. So I'm not claiming that nobody who was claimed to be there was going to be there. But I'm making some very specific claims about some people who've gone on the record publicly. And I'm asking, and again, we'll see, Milo, Mike, anybody else, for the reasons that I've indicated, that I think it's unethical if you know somebody's not going to be there and they're a big draw to, to, to say that they're going to be there. So if you agree with me in principle, then that's the question they should ask. Now, there was a level of poor planning to this that I believe indicates something uh, slightly more sinister, uh, maybe the wrong word. If you, if you have a better word, let me know what it is. I believe that this event was designed to be canceled. I believe that being able to do a press conference and say, oh, see, they were so mean to us, and this proves that they, they don't believe in free speech. As, by the way, I think, let's contrast this with the Ben Shapiro appearance. The Ben Shapiro appearance proves that UC Berkeley is prepared to put a lot of resources into letting a conservative speaker speak. Would we agree on that? I, I, again, I've been writing about Antifa for a year and a half. I've been writing about the black bloc groups for several years. I'm in the film Occupy and Mask with Andrew Breitbart, where I'm the main narrator. I believe this event was meant to fail. I believe that this event was put together deceptively for the reasons that I've stated. And I believe that people who actually authentically support free speech should be offended by that. I'm going to say that again. I believe that people who authentically support free speech should be bothered by people using the issue to create fake news in order to try to prove the case. I think there's plenty of solid evidence for to be concerned about free speech. And I'm not a big fan of Ben Shapiro. Anybody who follows my work knows that. But I've got to say, Ben was by far the better advocate for free speech in this case. He showed up, he did his speech, it was real. And I believe that we're not getting the full story on why th this event was had its sponsorship pulled. And I think people who legitimately believe in free speech should be bothered by this. Now, let me do something that, again, Mike and Milo and, and, and Pam didn't do. And again, by the way, Pam, I'm not, I don't want to pick it, but that's who was there. Let me take questions. Any questions? I haven't invited Milo to be on Fault Line specifically, but he could appear any time. I'd love to have him on. I'd love to have him on. I'll get my producer on that. You know, I was trying to find... Uh, I was actually trying to find uh, Milo's phone number, which I thought I had to give to my producer on Friday. So just so you know, that's real. The, the trick is, I don't know what email, I'll bet, I, I have an email that I bet works. No, 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 someone's asking if I'm not a big fan of Ben's because we can't get a conservatives to get along. Would I plan and hold a free speech rally? Why am I not condemning Berkeley? I'm not sure what Berkeley did wrong here. I don't think, I, I have not seen any evidence that Berkeley did anything wrong in this case. I, and I just went to explain it. So wait, hang on, don't, no one say anything for one second. Hold on. 
Just hold on one second. Because I got to, let me answer the other question. Let me explain my problem with Ben Shapiro. Okay? Uh, someone just sent me uh, contact info. Thanks, I got that. Yeah, see, it's good because I didn't have I didn't have that contact info. So thanks. I have an old, I have an old one. I'm not going to say the old one I have. But don't forget, he used to work for Breitbart, so you can guess. Okay, so uh, let me let me say this. Here's my problem with Ben Shapiro. Hold on, I just said hold on. And I'll, I'll talk about the $1 million number in a second. My problem with Ben Shapiro goes back to the Michelle Fields story, which I was working at Breitbart in the time, and that I was part of in the sense that I followed the whole thing from my perspective working inside the company as a Breitbart supporter. I believe Ben Shapiro dishonestly used the Michelle Fields situation to leave Breitbart in a high-profile way in order to promote his own business interest. So I don't believe that I don't believe he had an actual issue with it. And I've talked about this before. That's my issue with them. Okay? Does that answer that? The million dollar figure. I don't believe it's high. And the reason why, if it's well someone's asking why Ban why Milo would tell such an obvious lie. I for publicity, right? That's why he would do it. But let, I'm going to be very specific. Beca by the way, because I heard days ago, I heard days ago from multiple sources that they knew Bannon wasn't going to come. And it's lo and behold, that's turned out to be true. So the question is, is Bannon coming? Now, that's it. Okay, so why don't I think a million dollars is high? Because if they spent $600,000 on the Ben Shapiro thing for one night, a free speech event that was at least four days, from what I understand, would cost more. Does that make sense? So that seems valuable to me. Once again, Steve Bannon, I've, uh, Steve Bannon is more than welcome to be a guest on Fault Lines anytime. I think I think Ann Coulter's pretty credible, so that's what I think. Someone asked about Coulter versus Milo. I think Coulter's pretty credible. Any other questions? I'm not talking about George Webb on this. This is about you saw the topic of this. That's not about that. Does that make sense? Ask some other time. Well, someone's saying uh, I'm, I'm honorable. I appreciate uh, that. Uh, but this is also practical. It's ethical and practical. Do I think they purposely didn't get the required paperwork done by the deadline? I don't think it mattered. I don't think it mattered. The end game, someone's asking what Milo's end game for canceling his own speech. Well, he didn't, the end game was to say he's being persecuted and shut down. Does that make sense? That was the end game. That's what was suggested to me by multiple sources a week ago, and it's turned out to be the case. And if you look at the if you look at the press conference, that's exact. He did exactly what I was told a week ago would happen. It it does. He false flagged himself. That's a good way to put it. Okay, someone's saying anyone not left is being shut down. Well, it's not logic. There's, there, there's no, but the logic's clear. I'll uh, just go back and watch. That. I'm not going to repeat stuff I said at the beginning of the Periscope. I, I ask a few questions that should be asked. Now, what you'd expect 
is people will come out and answer them. What I'm going to tell you I don't think will happen. Yeah, they won't admit that it was on purpose, but but they I I urge people to uh uh, I urge people to make up their own minds on this and to be to ask the obvious questions and then see what the responses are. Well, I understand that it's upsetting. Someone's saying it's upsetting. Someone's saying Milo had more to gain by having the speech. Go back to what I said at the beginning. Ask Milo if he knew whether was he told in an email that Bannon would not be appearing and then promoted him anyway? Then I ask about Charles Murray and I ask about Heather McDonald. Look into it. Someone's saying they asked me a question four times and I dodged it. Or it's possible I didn't see it, so try asking it again. Say time five and then put in your question. Someone's saying, even if Berkeley did Spoonwall, it's a fact Milo lied about, right? That's what I'm saying. I don't know, just ask it again. I, you, do you understand I'm getting, look at the thing. I'm getting hit with a lot of stuff. Yeah, Lucian reported the cancellation days ago. That's right. That's right. Lee, I'm, I'm trying to make myself relevant by pretending to predict things. Was that the question? That's a silly question. I don't pretend to predict things. I said I was told this by multiple people. What I have been predicting is that Milo's in a spiral and I, it, it goes back a while ago. Are you pretending to be relevant by coming in and asking a question? Okay, well, I don't know what the question is. You've got to put it in a way, I'm getting a lot of stuff and I'm speaking, so. I would interview Milo anytime, any place. I would, I would have, I'd interview Mike Cernovich anytime, any place. I'm a free speech person. I'm in favor of free speech. Will I hold a free speech rally? I have no interest personally in doing that sort of event. I'm doing a citizen and citizen journalism and activism educational conference coming up that I think is more important than a better use of my time. I'm going to be honest. I think a lot of the people who talk about free speech are essentially shallow. Let me explain. Give me a sec to explain this. Uh, I've done a lot of seminars in my life. I did seminars on video production, okay? And anybody who knows the seminar business game knows that you can also do seminars. You can do seminars where you teach something, like I'll go out and teach journalism or I'll teach visual effects. Or you can also do seminars on doing seminars. Does that make sense? I'm going to say it again. You can do seminars on doing seminars. It's very easy because I've done a lot of seminars and you can, you can make a good living doing seminars. When I, it, it, in journalism, it's trickier. But back in the day when I was doing uh, visual effects and animation seminars, filmmaking seminars, you can make a lot of money doing that. So I could also teach people how to do seminars, how to book a room, how to uh, promote an event, how to set up a system where people can sign up, how to plan your seminar day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you follow me? The trick I've always, the problem I've always had with that is uh, it becomes very self-referential. Does that make sense? So. In the same way, I see a lot of people talking about free speech, doing speeches about free speech. You dig? That's what I see. So when I do a speech, when I do something, 
I like to keep it on topic. The topic is the topic. So I can do a speech on uh, the uh, dangers of the Muslim World League. I could do an hour on that easily. I could do an hour on uh, a crash course in citizen journalism. I could do an hour on the DNC-Ukraine connection. Now, if I do that speech on DNC-Ukraine, let's say, or the Muslim World League, let's do that. Well, I do do, I do, do that. You feel free to hire me, like all these other people. Ben ain't out there doing these speeches for free. God bless him. Whatever. I'm not knocking it. I'm appearing with Lance Walnew next month. I'm not doing it for free, although I, I respect Lance quite a bit. But he's paying me, okay? So, I'm not doing a speech about free speech. I'm seeing a lot of people, and it's apparently a lucrative industry, who are teaching people, who are doing speeches about free speech. I'd rather do a speech about a topic, and then if I get shut down, and I can say, I was trying to speak about the dangers of the Muslim World League, who's promoted by Saudi Arabia and has connections to the Wahhabist fundamentalist philosophy. And this group tried to shut me down. But at a certain point, when you're doing free speeches about free speech, to me, you become very meta and very shallow. Does that make sense? So I'm a little critical. I, I don't respect that. I, like I said, that's all I can say. I don't respect that. I get it. I know people are being making money on it. I know people are making money on it. And if my fundamental goal was to make money, I would have chosen a different career path at any number of points. I would have made different decisions at any number of points. But I've said this before and I'll say it again. I have kids. I don't like the direction I see the country going in. And I have ethical principles that I try to live by and therefore, that precludes me from doing certain things. Does that make sense? That precludes me from making certain choices. And one of them is lying to my audience, and one of them is doing a false flag on myself. So there we go. Yeah, I, no, I do, I do those periodically. Well, if someone says it's pointless, I don't agree. I don't agree. I would absolutely uh, interview Milo. I, I, first off, I've interviewed Milo before. If you listen to my podcast, Making the News, I did what I thought was quite a good interview with him. I like Milo, and I would do what I do. I'd be a respectful host. I'd allow him to make his point, and I would make my point, and we'd have Garland make his point, and it would be a great interview. Everybody we've interviewed, that's what we do. Adam Parkomenko, Hillary advisor. Someone's saying I would lose in a debate with Milo. No, I wouldn't. I would win because Milo won't show up. And the reason Milo won't show up, and you watch. And by the way, if he wants to challenge me to a debate, let's do that. Let's put your theory to a test, shall we? Let's put your theory to a test. because I'm not the one who's afraid to show up. I'll say it right now. Anytime, any place, you dig? Anytime, any place, you watch who's afraid to debate. It's not me. It's not me. You watch. What have I got against Milo? I, I don't know what you mean. I like Milo. I pray for him. I'm concerned about his health. I'm concerned about his well-being. And I've stated why a number of times. Someone saying free speech is the issue? No, free speech is an issue. So, there we go. Someone's asking what I like about my. I'm just trying to avoid the silly questions. Any, any, 
someone someone brought up debating Milo. I like Milo personally. I've dealt with him in the past. Don't forget, we used to be colleagues. We worked together. And I think he's very bright, but I think he's very troubled. So... Anytime. Yeah, the young DC social scene kind of worries me too. I, someone else brought up, someone said if, if Milo debated me on this subject, he would win. And I said no. And I agree in only Jesus saving him, but you know that starts with him. Right? Milo's demons are obvious. Milo said, and I quoted this yesterday, someone brought up this video that I'd seen before where Milo was talking about, it's an interesting video, look, look, look it up on YouTube. It's Milo talking about whether he choose to be gay or not. I don't care if Milo's gay, that doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, uh, but what he thinks about it's interesting. And what he said in that video is, that sometimes he thinks he wouldn't want to do it because he would like to have children and he wouldn't want to bring them up in a gay lifestyle, which I think is a... I, I actually admire him for that part because I think that shows a certain amount of wisdom. But then he says, well, I'm not sure I'd stop being gay because it's, it's bad for business. That's troubling. Right? That's troubling. And there's a lot in that video I found troubling. I, I found haunting. Um, because, let me just put it this way. Uh, it wouldn't even occur to me for a second. Well, gee, is it, would it be, would it, I, I just name name somebody. Name name some. You know, well known conservative woman. I'll pick on Ann Coulter for no reason whatsoever. If if I were to dump my wife and kids for Ann Coulter, it might be good for business. It would increase my profile. I'm just for any anybody, right? But you see what I'm saying? It would be good for business, in a sense. It would get a lot of notoriety. You see what I'm saying? But <clears throat> pick anyone. <coughs> it would never occur to me in a million years. It's not a slight on Ann Coulter. It's who thinks that way. Who thinks? I'm going to make this decision in my... I'd like to have kids, but it'd be bad. Who thinks that way? That's so troubling. You see what I'm saying? That's very bad thinking. And that's what I'm saying. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think Milo's getting bad advice from the people around him who are exploiting. I'll tell this story, then I'll leave. I've told the story, I'll tell this story, then I'll leave. I knew a guy who was hanging around Charlie Sheen when that Charlie Sheen melt, winning meltdown thing was happening. And what he said about Charlie Sheen at that point was, uh, he said, I was trying to give him good advice and anybody who's ever been around somebody who's self-destructing may have had this experience. What he said was, as soon as it got real, and I was saying, Charlie, you really got to stop this. You got to slow down with the drugs and everything else. You got to stop. Then he was out of Charlie's inner circle. So what happens is, when someone is self-destructing, but making money for people, the people, yeah, you can name it any Elvis, any number of people. The people around them who are on the gravy train don't want to tell them that they're self-destructing because they get kicked off the gravy train. Does that make sense? So it becomes a very self-selecting group. I've been in Hollywood. I've seen this. Okay? And I'm giving a second-hand example, but I've seen this. And I, you don't have to be in Hollywood to see it, right? If you've ever had a friend, 
a family member who suffered from addiction. Sometimes the, the bravest thing you can do is say, you've got problems. Read the Playboy article. Let's just go over this. In front of a journalist, Milo's going through his prescription drugs. Uh, one of the ways I get ahead on stories, I'm going to say this again. I said this to my wife recently. One of the ways I get ahead on stories is I'm simply the bravest one in the room. What I mean by that is months ago, when I started reporting the Dina Powell thing, I said Ivanka is clearly the way the establishment has gotten to Trump. And I called Ivanka out on it. And I did it journalistically. Other people did not disagree with me. They simply didn't want to do it. They were worried about doing it. They were just worried about speaking out. And I could say this over and over and over again. In story after story, the John Edwards story, the Wiener story, I went through the facts on those myself, reported on the facts myself, did the research myself, and it was like, well, it's obvious Edwards is having an affair. Nobody else wanted to say it. It was obvious Wiener had sent the picture to the girl, not his wife. No, other people didn't want to say it. Now people look back and, well, I, I, no, no, you didn't. Because I remember on those stories, same thing with Pigford. Once the New York Times reported on Pigford, I can just go over this over and over and over again. Okay? It's obvious Milo has a problem. Hear me out. It's flipping obvious. I don't know where you want to start with that, but it's obvious. It is not up for debate. You can be in denial about it, and that's easy to do. I, I don't choose to live that way. You with me? I don't choose to live that way. I don't see people who I like, who I can say something about, self-destruct in an obvious way, and other people don't want to say it because they think it might cost them money, or they think it might get them in trouble with social media, they don't suddenly fit into the click. I don't like or respect that. Now, if you do, that's fine. But it's not, this is not subtle. You could see it when he was on Bill Maher. You can see it when the statements came out that he'd made. And you could see it in the press conference afterwards. And I said it at the time, I'm concerned about Milo and I'm praying for him. I've said it consistently since then. I'm saying it now. I'm not doing it to be relevant. I'm not doing it to jump. I'm saying it because I've had friends die. My best friend growing up was a musician who died. He drank himself to death. And I'd said stuff, but I'm not going to be the guy who, well, I didn't want to say anything. Well, it's not my place. It's obvious that Milo has a spiritual problem. That's my take on it. Some people might say he's got a psychological problem. Some people might say he's got a physical addiction. Anybody who knows anything about prescription drugs who reads what's in that Playboy article and reads that Milo's picking up the prescription drug bottles in front of the writer, that, there's no other way to put it. That's a plea for help. Right? That's a plea for help. So it's, it's obvious. Why am I the only one saying it? Because I don't have anything to lose in this case. I'm not, to, I'm, I'm in fact not reliant on relevance. I, right? I, I'm not relying on Milo for relevance. I'm not the one sitting at a press conference with him. Right? Well, I have nothing to gain. Zero, nothing to gain. But when Milo posts a picture of pills in Dom Perignon and then pulls it down, 
that's troubling. And what's happened now is just dishonest with his own audience. He planned an event that's scheduled to self-destruct, and I think that's obvious too. As someone pointed out, he's clearly was dishonest about the guest list. And I'm suggesting he was dishonest knowingly about the Bannon one. He was clearly dishonest knowingly about the other ones as well. And, and that's the point. If he wants to debate that, that's fine. But that's it. I don't think anything here is that tricky. As I often say about journalism, getting the facts isn't tricky. It's getting people to listen to them. So there you go. That's it. Someone's saying they wish my family would move to D.C. If my family uh, felt that way, I would feel that way too. My wife's got a life that she likes in the Midwest, and she's supportive of the work that I'm doing. She thinks I'm a very good radio host. Right now I'm doing that. I'm supportive of my wife having friends and church and a dog and all that stuff. It's very expensive to live here. And that's it. So my wife and I talk about this. Obviously, we've talked about it, but we're very, we're very, we're very happy right now. I mean, we, we're not happy. We're thrilled. <laughs> we're thrilled. We're thrilled.